Previously on NYPD Blue. You transfer now? Yeah, I am. Let me be the one to leave. You don't need to disrupt your life. Danny, I do need to disrupt it. Is there something wrong with me, Andy? Something I could change? No, there's nothing to change. You're a wonderful woman. It, it's not anything you did. Well, then if it's something I didn't do, um, tell me and I'll try and do it. It, it, it just don't seem like it's going to work. It's a good move. Start fresh. That's exactly it. Have you thought about just taking a hardship leave of absence? No. No, I haven't. Did you take one when Bobby died? No. Leaves of absence are meant for people to straighten out situations in their lives. You need to take a look at some of these places I saw today. This one, I think you should go see after dinner. Tonight? Uh, apartments go like lightning, Andy. Okay, I, I can go see a few. I mean, the option is Brooklyn. I know you're not thrilled about it. I said I'll go. I just want to be like a normal engaged couple. Intimate. I'll go tonight. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, can we talk in there? Yeah, sure. It's got something to do with your transfer? The transfer was going to take too long, so I've, uh, I've put in for leave of absence. And that's come through? Effective tomorrow. But I, I've got some lost time built up, so I'm taking that today. One day? What's the big rush? It's not the one day. It's saying goodbye to everyone. And look at me, I'm starting to puddle up just talking to you. Danny's going to take it bad. That was a part of it. I, I wasn't up to facing him. I'll talk to him. Thanks, Andy. Any idea how long you'll be out? The, uh, the department allows for a year personal leave, but I'm uh, taking a day at a time. We're always here if you need us. I'm here. Tell everyone I'll call each of them. No problem. What you meant to Bobby, what you mean to me, I, I don't have words. Do what you have to to be happy. I think I am. You take care of yourself. You too. Last time, Jed. I can make it there by five tonight, Katie. How much is this place? In Manhattan? What is it, next door to a crack house? <sighs> yeah, I know, you told me that these, these apartments go fast. I'll let you know. Yeah, you still looking for a new place? I got a good deal where I'm living. We're gonna find more space. I'm gonna have to get a second job or win the lottery. You wanna hear anything about Diane calling in sick? She's not sick. 
Well, it's not like we're being late. It's going to be one of those days. Just got two homicide calls. One's in an apartment, Avenue B, between 2nd and 3rd. Other's right out on 9th Street. How about me and Andy take the Avenue B? Okay. You and Baldwin. Uh, being Diane Russell's on a personal leave of absence as of today, I guess Connie's without a partner. So let's say today you go with Danny and Andy. All right, boss. All right. Hey, uh, Diane's on leave as of today for how long? I don't know. Could be as much as a year. Gee, I would have liked to say goodbye. I saw her this morning when she was signing her papers. You talked to her? She said to tell everybody she was going to call. Mom, that's about me, her not wanting to say goodbye. Maybe it's about her having a tough time leaving here. Yeah, tough time leaving, tough time staying. She should have let me be the one to go. Danny, one foot in front of the other. We head out? Yeah. Come on. Lana Corso, it's her apartment. No sign of false entry. Guy over there called it in. Said he had an appointment to meet her. Don't look at your marks. Looks like manual strangulation. Pretty girl. Broke with fingernails. She put up a fight. Have crime scene and bag her hands. You called 911? What's your name? Nikolai Corso. You know this girl? Yes, Lana. She's dancer at Tail Feathers nightclub. Topless dancer. She prefer exotic. So, uh, Nikolai, what kind of appointment was it you and Lana had so early this morning? Not like you think. She's a nice girl. Never mind what we think. Why don't you tell us? I run jewelry shop, First Avenue. Lana take on consignment. Sell to girls where she work. Earrings, bracelets, semi-precious stones. Also for customers, give to girls. That's how she makes money. No need to sell body. So she wasn't hooking. You and Lana ever get together on the house? Maybe she was grateful you helping her out, trusting her with your wares. Not to say I'm not interested. Lana come two years ago from Russia. Say she want to make money before her teeth sag and the uh, ass fall. Start clothing shop. She's an excellent seamstress. So she dance at clubs, sell jewels for me. Let's get back to today. Today, I meet her here, 9 o'clock. I knock on the door, she doesn't answer. But I could hear inside her speaking with Matt. So you figured she was blowing you off? Maybe. So I go out and call. I leave message on the machine. I'm upset. And then I see two men come from building, and one carries a safe. A safe? She kept money and jewels in it. So after you saw these two coming out carrying a safe, what'd you do then? I'm upset. I'm scared. I'm... I right away call 911. Police come. I show them apartment. They open door. She's dead on the floor. Poor Lana. I guess you lost your sales girl, huh? You think you could describe these two men you saw? Yes, both white. One, I get close look. Handsome, dark, thick hair. Could be Italian. Italian? Italian. So I get back to work now? Got an idiot who runs my shop while I'm away. Why don't you give us your number at the shop? We'll be in touch. He's Martin Simons. Wife says Mel came up on him from behind, put the old man in a choco. Paramedics say the poor guy had a heart attack. Mrs. Simons, I'm Detective Metaboy. What am I gonna do? Can you tell me what happened? We just came from the bank. Marty cashed his monthly check from the VA, and we were walking back to our apartment when this, uh, this thug came up and grabbed Marty around the neck. Uh, this is my partner, Detective Jones. Hi. Which bank was that? The citizens of New York. Marty liked to take out a little cash to give the kids. They don't need the money, but it made Marty feel good. And you think this guy followed you from the bank? I don't know. It seemed like it came out of nowhere. Did you get a good look at him? He was black. He was about six feet. He had those little um, braids. He was young, maybe 20. I gave him the money. But then Marty didn't want to give up his ring. His wedding ring? Gold battalion ring he got from the Army in World War II. He wore that ring every day for 56 years. The shell came in the foxhole, and they called it a dud, but it blew 20 pieces of casing in Marty's leg. He said, calm down, old man. Just give me the ring, and I won't hurt you. 
Marty wouldn't give it to him. He got it anyway, and then Marty collapsed. And the boy ran away. That ring meant so much to him. We, we'd like you to come to the station house with us to uh, look at some pictures. Couldn't we do that later? I just want to go home now. Do you have anyone that can stay with you? My daughter. <laughs> How can I tell her her father's been murdered? We'll see what we can do to get that ring back. Not even noon. These mutts already sucking up beer, sticking in bills where they don't belong. By the day, I was good for a couple of shots and sticking in a few bills by noon. Hey, looking for the owner. Which one? Joe Shulman. Call me Joey. Me and my partner are on the place. Congratulations. So what can I do for you? Lana Corso. Uh, she don't work till late tonight, so why don't you come back then? Drinks on the house. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, last night. She danced the late shift. Why? What's she done? She's got herself killed. Oh, my God. You got any idea who'd want to see her dead? Uh, no. Really, I, I don't. You know she was selling jewels out of your club? Yeah, she didn't hide it. Me and Ed just figured it was like a service for the customers. And you didn't maybe want a cut? Fucking oh, it's Penny Annie. What, you think we had a whack behind selling knickknacks? Want to have a boyfriend? I wouldn't know. How about any special customers? Anybody who might have got jealous? Nobody fixated, that's what you're asking. You know, the girls probably know more about Lana's personal life than I do. Why don't you ask around? Well, we'll need a list of personnel on and off the books. Anything you guys need. You. What's her name? Chelsea. Like Chelsea Clinton. What can you tell me about Lana Corso? Why? Because I asked you. Does Lana have a boyfriend you know? I guess she was dating this one guy on and off. This guy got a name? Mike Gillespie. He's a bouncer over at Sloan's. Hey, uh, can I talk to you a minute? I'm a detective. What's it about? It's about Lana Corso. Oh, God. Did something happen to her? What makes you think that? Is it okay if we sit down? What's your name? Kristen Moore. So what happened to Lana? Someone strangled her at her apartment. She was, um, at my best friend in New York. She was different from the other girls. Any idea who might have wanted her dead? It's so nice to everyone. I, I can't believe anyone would want to kill her. Do you know anything about her selling jewelry to any girls at the club, any customers? Sure. You think that's why she got killed? We don't know. It's how long you've been working here? Six months. What can you tell me about the owners? Joey and Ed. Uh, they're nice enough, I guess. Look, a place like this, we all know, has got to be hooked up with some kind of criminal activity. We're not looking to shut it down. We're looking to find out who killed your friend. I keep away from all that stuff. Lana did, too. What about a boyfriend? There was this one guy, uh, Mike Gillespie, but I don't know if I'd exactly call him her boyfriend. Well, he works over at Sloan's. I don't think you've seen him in a while. OK, Bruce. You've been a lot of help. You're going to be here if we need to reach you. I don't work till tonight. I just came by for my check. I'm scared. Look, here's my card. You call me if you need anything. This is so awful. On that DOA Martin Steinman has Greg traced the pattern of street robberies. Looks like elderly being followed coming out of the Citizens Bank in New York over on 8th Street, uh, especially the first of the month, like today. When they get their Social Security checks on the line. Our DOA's check was from the VA. Bottom feeders. Take your government check. Maybe you don't eat till the next one. Eight muggins past six weeks. Each one bad guy came up from behind, used a chokehold. They get descriptions from the victims? Black male, 20, sometimes two of them. It's pretty general. In this case, the DOA's wife thinks she could probably ID the guy who attacked the husband. The reason no one put this together before, even though all the victims came out of the same bank, they got taken off in different locations, and some reports even fell off into different precincts. Get rid of any crime. Put some special attention there the rest of the day. Now, we were thinking maybe set up on that bank ourselves. Let's do it. At Barcelona's, this Mike Gillespie works out. They haven't heard from him. There's still no answer to this place. Maybe we should drop by. This Gillespie was Lana's boyfriend. They had a distant relationship. Phone dump don't show no calls from her place to or from his place. Her and the boyfriend, Michael Gillespie. Came up one collar for discon, one for assault. He's a bouncer, maybe breaking up a bar brawl. You know what, I'll try and dig up some background on the owners. I'll call OCCB and see if they've got anything on ties to the mob. I can try the state liquor authority. Sounds good. Uh, Detective McDowell, 
Detective Russell on line one. She said she was going to call people. Uh, Miss Punin. Hello. Oh, you remember me. Cynthia, what are you doing here? Something wrong? Nothing's wrong. <clears throat> Is there someplace we can talk? Uh, sure. Uh, no, thanks. I'll get to the point. Okay. I didn't like how we left things. Yeah, I, I didn't like how we left things, neither. I care about you. I didn't like the idea of you thinking I was selfish or didn't understand your point of view. I wasn't thinking any of that. I, I know your life is complicated. You've got a five-year-old boy. You've got a history. Oh, God, I rehearsed all this in my mind, and now I'm not getting any of it right. You're doing fine. I, I guess what I wanted to say is that me pushing you like I did into making some kind of commitment before you were ready, I didn't give you any choice. I feel like I drove you away, and that's not what I wanted. And if things ever change and you decide maybe you and I could have something together, no pressure, no clock ticking, and not everything going back and forth to Uncle Eddie, please give me a call. Cynthia, um... I think you should know I I'm getting married. Married? I, I didn't even know you were seeing someone else. I'm getting married to my ex-wife. My ex-wife, Katie. I didn't get the impression you two were heading in that direction. Well, I know we hadn't been, but uh, it's good for Theo, and uh, Katie's been taking care of him ever since his mom passed. Andy, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. And I'm only going to say this because I do care about you. Cynthia. Hear me out. You're a good man. And I know you love your son very much. But I think you should consider if this is good for you. Because if it's not good for you in the long run, it isn't going to be good for Theo. Well, uh, there's more to it. Every direction. Knowing what's good, what's not. Got to be clairvoyant. Amen. I hope it works out for you. Uh, right. Thanks. Hey, Connie. OCCB says these guys at Tail Feathers, they're hooked up pretty good with the Gambino crime family. Shocking for a topless joint. Yeah, the owners are fronting for wise guys doing business out of there. Drugs and money laundering. Manhattan DA's office, they had the place up six months, but they couldn't get anything solid. Apparently, they're pretty slick. Thinking maybe this Lana somehow got in the middle of something she shouldn't have? It's possible. <sighs> so what did Diane have to say? Mostly apologize for not saying goodbye in person. Yeah, you know, uh, did she say anything about her future plans? Nothing specific. Take care, Andy. Yeah, you too. Hey, Andy. Well, what do I mean? Need your help. What are we talking about? I'm working a homicide. Out of pattern. Elderly robbed in the street first of the month, coming out of the bank. One today turned up DOA. I'm gonna put together a decoy operation. You want me posing as an old man? What's wrong with Metaboy? Greg's already on board. Works best with two and safer. It's first of the month. That's a limited window of opportunity. Hey, great. This I'd pay to see. Put me down, too. Lieutenant, busy day. DOA alley off 4th Street between B and C. Wait, so Connie and me? Right. Danny, I'm sure she'll call you. Yeah, well, either she will or she won't, I guess. She will. What do you got? Bottle picker found him, called it in. No witnesses came up and said they saw it. Oh, so we're not talking ground ball here. Maybe someone lives back in one of these buildings, heard something. Thanks. Looks like two entry wounds, one in the chest and one back of the head. Big holes, figure large caliber gun. Don't look like he's dead that long. Not a lot of blood around. Uh, looks like he shot someplace else. Dump job. We got a wallet. Money's still there, so it wasn't a robbery. ID says he's Michael Gillespie, 1162 Ludlow Street. Michael Gillespie? Is Alana Corso's boyfriend? <sighs> looks like. I guess that's why he wasn't home and no one searched for him at work. Son of a bitch. We got a mystery here.
appreciate you helping out, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, those street crime guys did one hell of a job on me. You're saying they did a lousy job on me? Nah, but uh, you gotta admit, with you, they didn't have to do that much. You think you look younger than I do? Because of that carrot top you dip in paint twice a month? What are you talking about? I don't dye my hair. Yeah, okay, matter boy, whatever you say, only do me a favor, huh? You're gonna keep your hair that red, you gotta talk with an Irish brogue like that leprechaun with the marshmallow cereal on TV. Okay, let's not say anything more we might regret. <clears throat> Still no one looks like your guy. Yeah, we could be here a while. At least you get to sit. Special preview of my golden years. You know, parading in and out of here like the Sunshine Boys waiting to get mugged. We say we get back in line. Yeah, come on. Give me a push there, sonny boy. Next in line, please. Hello there. See you next month. <clears throat> That company. Easy, metal boy. Nice and slow. Hey, yo, Pops, wait up. Please don't hurt us. Shut up. Do what you told me, but you won't get hurt. What? what do you want? What do you think we want? Right. To see the money you got at the bank. Look here, old man. Government check day. I saw you take the cash out the bank, so don't be playing dumb with us. No. We wouldn't do that. Andy, give him the money. Get your money, asshole. Hold it right there. Take it easy, my man. Who's the old man now, huh, scumbag? Hey, we put Rashawn and Michael in separate rooms. And uh, Mr. Simon's coming up for the lineup. Uh, Detective Medavoy. Detective Russell calls for you. Huh. You talk there? No. She'll call. <clears throat> so, um, that DOA in the alley, that was Mike Gillespie. Mike Gillespie? As in Lana Corso's boyfriend? One of the same. You get anything out of it? Dump job, no witnesses. May I help you? Um, Detective Sorensen? Kristen, hi. This is my partner, Andy Sipowitz. I heard Mike Gillespie's dead. Uh, why don't we go talk about it in here? I guess news travels fast in the titty bar grapevine. Right there. Detective McDowell, Christian Moore. Hi, Christian. Hey, uh, have a seat. Get you something to drink? No, thank you. I, I didn't tell you everything before, but I was scared. I'm sorry. It's okay. Tell us now. I just can't help thinking if I said something, maybe Lana wouldn't be dead. Or Mike. Said something about what? Well, I didn't want to lose my job. No one likes it if you talk too much. And since my mom died, we're alone. I'm putting my brother through school and dancing at the club. I, I couldn't make that kind of money anyplace else. Kristen, what are we talking about? <sighs> Frank Russo, the night barman at the club. He's always hitting on me. The last couple of weeks, he's got all these questions about Lana. What kind of questions? Like, does she go to the gym every day? How much money do I think she's made off selling jewelry? Does she keep the stuff she sells at her place? We got the personnel records. Uh, let me go run this guy in the computer. You think he's involved? First, I thought maybe he's hot for her. Then one night, Mike comes in the club. Delana wasn't even dancing. I saw Frank and him talking. Do you hear what they were saying? Now I'm like, maybe it was Frank who killed Lana, and he killed Mike to shut him up. I mean, Frank, he's pretty twisted. What if he thinks I know something? What should I do? Oh, it's gonna be okay, Kristen. You did the right thing by coming in. I just feel so bad about Lana. <clears throat> we'll be right back. I say we wire her up. This Rousseau's got a thing for her. Maybe she gets him to talk. What, you were me? You can see she's already scared half to death of this asshole. And this asshole could have killed two people. We get this guy off the street, the girl in there safe, and he can't kill anyone else. Frank Rousseau, one previous caller for bad checks. 
Let's get a photo of Ray with this and a picture of Gillespie over at that jeweler. See if he picks him out as who he saw leaving Lana's place this morning. The club's hard to control. Maybe we could set up at her apartment. I'll call the DA's office. So I get Frank to come to my place and see if I can get him talking about what happened to Lana. That's the idea? Maybe get him to think you're going to take over selling jewels and offering a piece of the action. Play up to him. I think I can get him to say something. He's not really so smart. Well, you don't have to get him to say he killed her. All we need is some cooperation. He was there this morning. And you think I'll be safe in there? We'd be set off nearby watching the whole thing on video, so if he tries anything, we can come right in. As soon as you get him in there, we'll have cops right outside your door. And the reason we're suggesting your apartment is if you give permission for a video camera, then the other person doesn't need to know they're being filmed. I understand. Christian, if you're not up for this, now's the time to say so. Well, I'm not saying that I'm not scared, but I, I want to do this for Lana. Okay, then. And also, if I can help you arrest him, I don't have to worry anymore about him doing something bad to me. Did I miss him? Was he in there? Mrs. Simons, don't be concerned you didn't recognize anyone that time. Maybe in the next bunch. So the man who killed my husband, he, he could be in this one? No, we don't know that. Mr. Simon, 88 Valerie Haywood. You ready? Tell us if you recognize anyone. Do you recognize anyone? Number four. Where do you recognize him from? He's the boy who attacked us this morning. He's who took Marty's ring and murdered us. Okay, Mr. Simons. That's a big help. We all start up, let me just say. My cousin Omar, he's a lawyer. Hey, that's good for Omar. Bet his mom's proud. Guess good thing we uh, gave Michael here his rights in a car on the way over. Yeah, Omar catch us on that for sure. It was your car, Michael. You want to phone Omar or you want to hear us out? I asked you something first. Like what? Look, what you have me stand in a lineup for with three damn cops already going to say I tried to rob him? Hey, see that? Michael's smart, too. You should be more like your cousin. Put that mind to better use. Now, where were you this morning, Michael? My old lady Lulu's. We was out partying last night. This morning we was hungover. So we stayed in bed. So you're saying that Lulu can vouch for your whereabouts? Give me your phone. What's so damn funny? No, see, uh, that lineup uh, witness just now picked you out robbing an old man this morning. You followed out of that same bank. You know that's why we put you in that lineup, Michael. You just want to make sure what you already know. I ain't saying I did. Well, we know it was you, Michael. We got witnesses. It's the same pattern we caught you off just now. So don't be lying to us. Thing is, that old guy's wife, she's been bugging us if we found who robbed them about a ring that got taken. You helped us, giving us a heads up what you did with that ring. We could get you some consideration. Helping you find this ring that will help me out? Yeah. All right. I got it. Where? Top drawer, dresser in my apartment. Write down the address. This will give me some consideration. I will definitely tell the DA you were cooperative. See, the only problem is, Michael, that old man died. As far as the law is concerned, that means you killed him. You telling me that old man died? Tough luck, huh, Michael? Man, I didn't even want to hurt that dude. Why don't you just give up the damn ring? Truth would go Christian and be here over 20 minutes ago. Here we go. Hi. Hey. Take off your coat. It's a nice surprise you invited me over. I didn't think you even liked me. Well, I had to act like that at the club. I mean, Ed and Joey don't like us girls dating employees. Mm. You want something to drink? I got beer. Yeah, beer's good. Let me lay this right out. I don't want happening to me what happened to Lana. I guess not. Because if what happened to her was because she was stupid and she wouldn't play ball, I'm not making that same mistake. I don't follow you. What's all this crap about Lana? All I'm saying is 
you know, whatever you had to do, that's cool. What I'm thinking is I can take her place, selling jewels at the club. So I'm coming to you first to say you and me can be partners. Anything I make, you get half. Look, babe, come on. Enough talk. This kid's hey. a major asshole. Easy, Danny. Oh, he's not interested in nothing but throwing a hump in her. Frank, come on. I want to get this straight. Sure, we're partners. How about show me we're partners? Come on, Andy, let's go. Just wait. Frank, that's enough. I, I don't want to. What is this? A kind of prick tease? You ask a guy over your house and then you don't want to? I asked you over because I want to talk about business. In private. I don't think so. All right, let's go. Just wait. It's not enough. It's a nice blouse. You wearing a bra under that? Hmm? Uh, hey, come on, don't! No, let's go! Let's go! We're gonna do this. No, no! Come on, that's all! What the hell's going on? You're under arrest for attempted rape. Slut like this takes a hump place. You think it's rape? I'm sorry, he wouldn't say anything. It's okay, Christian. You work with them? I ain't skanky little bitch. You wanna shut your mouth now, Frank, before I shut it for you? Alright, Daddy. Alright. It's my jacket. Come on. You got a big problem, Frank. We got a real good picture of you on tape trying to rape that girl. Your film debut is not exactly scoring you no know, Oscar, but it does win you 10 years in a joint. It couldn't be rape. She invited me over. This shows her saying no, and you not taking that for an answer. That's attempted rape. You want to see it? The good news is, I think we can help each other out. How's that? Cards on the table. We need something from you, which gives you a hand you can deal. You see, with this attempted rape, we know what happened. That's 10 years we got in the bank. But with these two people that got murdered today, those, we don't know what happened. We're talking about Lana and Mike. Hey, that I know nothing about. Hey, we know you were there. Come on, back in Lana's, remember that Russian guy's voice on the message machine? Well, he picked out your picture coming out of her place two minutes after she got killed. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what's working for you is Mike and Lana both being dead. That leaves just you who knows what happened. We don't know, was it you killed the girl? Was it Mike? Plus, with Mike, did you shoot him for the money? Did he pull a gun on you? Now, if you could help us out with that, maybe we could make this rape thing go away. You're like, go away, away? Like, poof. All right. I didn't kill no one. Mike killed the girl. It was all his idea. I just went along. So you were just robbing her? Okay, yeah, but she wasn't supposed to be home. Girl hits the gym at 8.30, 24-7. She don't get home till 10. This morning, she picks to meet the jeweler. Bad luck. Exactly. And Mike... He's got a key. He made a copy for from when they was dating. So Mike's planning this all along. That's right. So she comes in on us. She's just grabbing up the safe. She starts shouting. Mikey flips out. Mike did. Yeah. He sticks his hand over her mouth, ripping at her clothes, shouting at her, shut up, shut up. She just hits the floor. So you book? Damn right we book. Jump in my car, take off, park a few blocks away from there. Mike pulls a gun on me. I push the gun away. Gun goes off. You're saying this was self-defense you're shooting Mike? Yeah. Like, justifiable. I had to do it. You see, I didn't kill no one. Okay. If you make a statement, we'll take it to DA. Case. I just tell the truth and uh, everything's cool. All right. Well, where did you find him? Uh, the guy that you picked out, he told us where to find it. You've arrested him? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you both. Marty wore this ring every day for 56 years. Now I'll wear it for him. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Can we get you a ride home? No. My daughter's waiting downstairs. We'll walk you out. Frank Russo's writing down his statement. Did he go for both homicides? Uh, he's writing down his version. He places himself on the scene in both cases. Probably won't include the second bullet Gillespie took right behind the ear. It kind of blows his self-defense theory. Good work. Don't forget to put in for the overtime. Oh, uh, Detective Jones. Uh, Detective Russell for you. Thanks, John. They wrote it all down. I might kill the girl and how he tried to kill me. Good. So what happens now? Well, you take a little ride to Central Booking and get processed. 
Or is that what you call it? A formality, right? After that, I get bail? Frank, there's no bail on a murder charge. Murder charge? What's he talking about? The two counts of murder, Lana and Mike. Well, wait a minute. I explained all that, and you understood. Yeah, and you're getting charged with murder, so now it's between you and the legal system. But like we promised, we're holding off on the attempted rape. Oh, well, thanks for nothing. You lousy cops, you screwed me. What about that second bullet you put in Mike's head? Chill, Frank. There's always hope. We're cops. We don't believe nobody. But juries, you never know. Think of OJ. Here they are now. Hey, Kristen. Kristen, hi. Frank gave it up. He said he killed Lana. Not in so many words, but uh, don't you worry. He's going down for killing both of them. Come on in. Of course, uh, him getting charged with murder. There's no bail. So you don't have to worry about him coming after you. Thank God for that. And thank you, too. I'm going to go uh, freshen up. I'm getting off duty. I could drop you home. Oh, that's very nice, but I have to go to work. I could drop you there. Why don't you come by the club later? I'm dancing 10 to 2. Yeah, maybe I will. I'd like that. I'll leave your name at the door so you won't have to pay the cover charge. I could probably handle that myself. So, um, I'll see you later? Yeah. Nice girl. Yeah, seems like. Glad she's okay. Good night. Yeah, good night. Nice working with you today. Yeah, thanks. You okay? I'm fine. <clears throat> I know uh, sometimes the only way to learn is by making your own mistakes, but believe me when I tell you how many times I've seen this, you got to find some way to, to move on. I know, Andy. Okay. Hey, I'm uh, going to pick up some takeout and go back to my place. You want to come over? I think I'm going to stay here and type out the fives. I don't think I'd be very good company tonight. All right, then. Good night. Night. late, so I put Theo to bed. Sorry. I know I should have called. How was work? You don't want to hear about all that. Why not? I like to hear about your day. I just don't feel like talking now, okay? Okay. Stuck between the usual skulls and dead bodies, I got Diane Russell leaving the squad, and I got a partner who's maybe going to crack up over that, plus a new boss. I feel like everything's falling apart down there. Bobby's wife's leaving the squad. You didn't mention anything about that. Like I said, I, uh, I don't feel like talking about all this. Okay, Andy. There's chicken left in the kitchen. I can heat some up. That's okay, I got it. Fifteenth Detective Squad. Diane, hi. No, no, that's okay. I figured you'd get to me. M must be tough for you leaving. So how long do you think you'll be gone? Are you going away someplace? Yeah, sometimes it's best not nailing that stuff down. You know, I got a lot to say, but... Maybe it's not really the time. Yeah, okay. I'm here, you know, anytime you need me. You take care of yourself. I hope it all works out. I'll talk to you soon. 